In this video, we're going to go through getting started with the DaySmart Pet Program. We're going to go through the setup wizard. We're going to go through adding in services and editing services, adding in employees, going through the appointment book, adding in a client and a pet, and then we're going to make an appointment and check it out to just kind of round out the end of the video. We're not going to cover everything that the software can do with this getting started video, just some of the main subjects to kind of hit the ground running with the program. And before we dive into some of the subjects, let's just go through a little bit of a lay of the lands in the program. I'm on the appointment book screen with a bunch of appointments. You probably don't have those yet. We'll get you to that point. There's a checkout screen to check out appointments, request screen up here, a client and pet list screen, a service list screen, employee screen, and then if you hit more, you're actually going to pull up a drop down with a bunch of other sub screens that you can navigate to. Now one of the greatest ways to kind of get started is to go through what's called the setup wizard. I already ran through the setup wizard, but I'm going to summon them again by clicking down here on options. And that's going to pull up my options on the left hand side. And I'm going to go in here to management. And I'm going to pull that down to setup wizard. Now the setup wizard is a four step process to kind of run you through setting up the program. So I'll hit this start setup. Now the first step, it's going to ask me to put in the hours that the business is open. This is so the system knows what time to schedule appointments. I'm not going to change any of this, uh, but you could click in here and change this if you needed to. You could click here and mark days as off if you needed to, or switch them back to on, depending on what hours you're open. I'm going to save these hours and continue right along. Step two is going to be adding in services. Now this is a crucial part of getting set up in the program. If you have an electronic list of services, you can send it to us and we can convert it for you. Or you can add in your services manual. And then the third choice is to run through the setup wizard and pull in the services from our list and then it's going to add them to your software automatically. So I'll just select the dog grooming category here, for our example, and then I'll hit save services. You could go through all these other categories of service if you wanted uh, to add them into your system. So I'll hit save services, and then step three, it's going to ask me about sales tax setup. I can choose to add in sales tax down here, product rate and service rate, depending on what I need. Uh, I can also add in an additional tax rate, Right, so I have two different tax rates in here with different names if I needed, different rates depending on what I needed, and I could also create that as a compound tax if I wanted. Now I'm just going to go ahead and remove that, that second tax rate and just hit save taxes. And then step four is all about adding in employees to the business. I'm going to go through this on another step, but if you did put in the employee's name here and then their email address, the system would send them an email to activate their account uh, by setting up their password. Now for our example, I'll just hit add employees and finish. It's going to say, hey, wait a minute, you didn't add anybody. I'll say, that's okay. I'll we'll just say yes there, and then we're done. We ran through the setup wizard. I'm going to hit close to finish that process out. Now, the first thing I'm going to want to do after running through the setup wizard is go to my list of services to see those services that were pulled through uh, from, the, from the service list, and then edit them, right? So they probably didn't have the right uh, price and duration. So then I could go through and, and change the price and duration. Now this little blue and white interface that popped up, it's actually w wanting to walk through adding in a service with me. I'll go ahead and hit teach me. Let's actually add in a custom service here and we'll double back to editing the ones that are on our list. So we'll hit this little plus sign down here. It's gonna walk me through this. Okay, it's gonna want me to go ahead and add in a service name. Um, so we'll go ahead and put in this service here. All right, and then when we're choosing a category, you could just type in here and save the category depending on what you needed. I have some categories already added in. Uh, let's just select that as dog grooming. And then for bath only, I'm gonna create an abbreviation. I could use a number. I could use a series of uh, alphanumeric uh, to create the idea. It just depends. I normally just do an abbreviation of the service name. I can create an appointment color. Strongly encourage this. That way you can identify that uh, service very easily on the appointment book screen and I'm going to click in here and I'm going to add a duration and I'm going to go ahead and add in a price. There's going to be a standard price. I can change the price when I'm booking the appointment. I'll show you how to do that at a later step. I could choose whether or not I want to enable sales tax and then once I'm done I'll just go down here and hit save and I will save that service and add it into my service list and my little handy helper here has told me that I did a good job so I'll hit done all right, and then the service that we added in is right here on the service menu. Now, the services that it pulled through from the uh, setup wizard, let's go ahead and click on one of these, and we can just change it. So let's click on this, 
and then we can go into any of the details and we could change them. We could change the category, we could change the ID, the duration, the price, and the color. Awesome. So I didn't really change anything, so I can actually just hit save. I didn't actually have to hit save, but that's totally fine. And then let's just back up out of this. So here we go. Cool. And then now, uh, once we've talked about adding in the list of services, we're going to switch gears for a second here, and we're going to go through uh, the employees. Right, so uh, adding in employees is that you know these two steps go hand in hand: services and employees. Uh, I would say that this is second. We would just come here to the the employee screen, and I would just hit the plus sign here to go ahead and add in the employee's information. So I would add in their first and last name, their email address, and then it's going to send them an email to finish setting up their account. Their account is going to be in a pending status until the cus until the employee goes in and sets up their password. All right, and let's back up out of this. I do want to click on one of the existing employees to go through some of these other settings. So uh, let's click on Kim here, and we're going to go up here to where it says Employment Setup, and I want to run through these settings. This is where you would choose whether or not the person's an administrator, whether or not the uh, employee should receive notifications about uh, uh, appointments. That's totally up to you. It's more of a personal preference. If the person is an independent contractor and keeps all their own totals, you would uh, click that box. You can also not show them on the appointment book. Uh, for instance, think of a receptionist that doesn't take appointments. And then you would click here if the person no longer worked at the business. Now down at the bottom, this is the service limitation screen. This is where you can tell the system, hey, you know what, this employee, they perform some services, but not all of the services that I offer. And you'd hit yes here. And then you would go through the list and you would click on the services or service categories that this employee can perform. So for instance, let's say that this employee didn't do cat grooming or feline grooming, I'd do that. And that would mean that if you went to book that service under their name, the system would warn you and try to stop you from doing that because it's not a service that this employee is supposed to be performing. Now I'm just going to turn these off for the time being and say that the employee can perform all of the services and go ahead and hit save here to save that employee and the changes that I made. Now once the employees have been added in, uh, the next thing the system wants to know is when those employees are working, right? So uh, it needs to know when the employees are working so that way it can guide you away from scheduling appointments when you don't have enough uh, staff. So I'm going to click up here on where it says schedule. Okay, so now that the schedule scheduling screen is up, let's go ahead and go through this. I want to point something out. Uh, each employee is listed as working open to close because I did not tell the system that the employees work different hours. So let's go ahead and pick on Kim again, and let's say that Kim didn't work on Monday and Wednesday, and that was a recurring uh, day off for her, or days off for her, I should say. So I'll click on here. I'm going to say that it is not a working day, and I'll say that it's an off day. And then right here, I'm going to hit repeat, and I'm going to make this day off apply to every Monday and every Wednesday on a one-week cadence. And then I could end this. Uh, let's just go ahead and say we want to end this sometime next year. So We'll end it at the end of next year, right? Like so. And then if I hit schedule, it's going to automatically uh, mark that employee off for those days. So let's go ahead and hit schedule here. I'll show you what that looks like. And it's going to save the schedule for you. Uh, and then you'll see it visually indicate that the change was made. Now, if I wanted to click on this day and just make changes to this one day, that's totally fine. Uh, I would just make my changes here. Let's say the person was leaving early on this day. We do that. And as long as I don't hit repeat, it will only apply to this one day that I've selected. So I'll go ahead and hit schedule and make the changes on that one day. Now let's say I put in the recurring days off and I want to make changes to the recurrence in the future uh, for like a one-off uh, vacation day for somebody, let's say. So I'm going to click up here on the calendar and I'm going to navigate to that day. So let's navigate out to the future here and we'll click here. And then uh, we can click on the day that we want to mark for vacation and we'll just say that it's a non-working day like so and we'll switch it to vacation and then we can just hit schedule. Now, this is a good example. If the whole business was going to be closed on this day, you just hit close. And then that's going to mark the whole business as closed and everybody off. To mark it back as open, you just click back on open and it's going to uh, indicate that the business is open with the schedules there. Awesome. All right. And then let's go ahead and move on to the next phase of this. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about the appointment book screen, right? Once we put in the services, the employees, their hours, then the appointment book screen is going to become a little bit more functional. Now, like I said, I have a bunch of appointments on here, and let's actually run through 
uh, making an appointment after we talked a little bit about how to navigate around on this screen. So up at the top, you can choose the number of employees that you want to see on the screen. Let's say I only wanted to see David's schedule today. I do that, hit only and it pulls up David's. If I hit all employees, it'll pull up all employees. I can also change it from a day view to a three day or a week view, depending on what I need to see at any given moment. So let's go ahead and choose three day and you'll see. There we go. And I'll jump back to the one day view. All right, like so. And then over here on the left hand side, I can click on the calendar and jump out to a day in the future. I can navigate with the calendar out here. I can also click on a number of weeks on the calendar screen and jump out into the future. Um, I can hide the calendar if I wanted to see more of the appointment book on the screen. And then we also have a waitlist function and a drag and drop clipboard down here. Uh, and let's actually go ahead and make an appointment here. So I'm going to click once on the appointment book to start the process. And it's going to want to know some information, right? So it knows the day and the time that I clicked on. It knows the employee's column I clicked on. It does not know which pet is coming in. Uh, it does not know what service I'm going to be booking. So let's actually really quickly just, just throw something in here. So I'm going to throw in this, this client, and I could just start typing in the client's name to find them, or the pet's name, or the phone number. I could also click here and choose the service that I want, like so. And then once I've chosen the uh, pet and the service, really, I'm ready to just hit schedule, and I can throw that onto the appointment book. Now, you can get much more detailed with this, but let's make this appointment really quickly. And I'll throw that onto the appointment book for you, and you'll see it go live, like so. If I click on the appointment, I can go in here and I'm going to actually cancel it. And I'll hit no-show. And when I cancel this out, I'm not going to mark it as a no-show. I am going to say that it was a test here, though. I'll put that in there, and then I can cancel this appointment out. So let's do that. Okay, and now I'm going to make a more detailed appointment. Uh, I'm actually going to add in a new client and a new pet as I make the appointment. This is going to be really good for you guys to see because very, very common uh, to add in a pet and a client as you're booking. So uh, right here where it says which pet, I'm going to hit add new pet and client. Let's do this. Day smart pet. Okay. And then I'm going to put in here, this is the phone number for the tech support team, right? And then this is going to be the email for the tech support team. Always good things to have at the ready. You can always get them right from our website. Uh, to get on the phone with us or to send us an email. Now I'm going to turn off these notifications for this fake customer I'm adding in. Normally you would want to leave these turned on. These are the notifications to remind the customers of their appointment. All right, and I'm going to actually put this over here too. So let's just put that over there for us, if it'll let me. There we go. And then I'm going to hit next, add pet. And we're going to add the pet in here too. All right, so we got the pet here and we're going to add in Sam. And we'll say that Sam is a dog, and we can select from the breed list. Uh, quite a few different breeds in here. You can edit this list if you need to. Pet birthday, sex, and weight. None of that stuff is required. Really, just the pet's name is required when you're adding the pet into the system. So I'll hit save up here. Okay, and I wanted to point out here, so it's got DaySmart Pet. Uh, listed up here at the top of the screen. Uh, and so that's indicated that it added me in the system. And that's got my pet information here too. So on the appointment, you know, I can see information about this client's previous notes, upcoming appointments, recent visits, or photos. I can also go into Sam's profile, and I can see comments and medical information, like if I wanted to record vaccination status and expiration dates here, I could do that. I could also add in documentation uh, and save that in the client's profile, uh, like think of a picture of a shot record or something like that. Uh, also, grooming section here. I'm going to discard my changes. There's a personality section, recent visits, and photos. Right. So this is all of the client information that you can see while you're making the appointment. I actually did not leave the appointment screen. I'm still booking here. So let's go down here and choose a service. I'll choose this bath and brush service. And then as I'm booking the service, I have the ability to change any of the details, like the amount of time, the duration, or the price over here. I could also add in a special note. Right, so I can add that in at the bottom of the uh, appointment, and that's actually going to show on the appointment book screen that there's a special note on this client's profile. So I'm going to hit schedule and go ahead and schedule that appointment into the appointment book. There it is. Now, you might have noticed that when I was adding in the pet and the client, 
I didn't add in all of the pet and client information. Uh, I could double back and add in more by going into the appointment details screen and just clicking on this view profile right here. And what this does is it opens up a secondary tab that takes me into the client screen where I'm now looking at the client profile screen. So I'm in two tabs here. I'm on the appointment still and I'm in the client profile screen. And if I go to personal info, I can see all of the client's personal info here. I can add in address information. How did you hear about us? Special comments down here. There's a full pet information screen where you can see all of the pet information. There's a full history screen where you can uh, get a lot of information about previous purchases, a balance and loyalty point screen, a form integration screen, a note screen, and then a photo screen. Strongly encourage you to put in photos of the pet. If you click on the pet and right here there's a little uh, camera icon, click on that. And that's going to pull up your pictures and then you just pick on the picture you want and then it's going to add it into the system like so and it automatically saved that for me. Now you might have noticed uh, I actually went into the client profile screen and I put the picture here too for the picture of the client. Um, just makes sense a lot of times you won't have pictures of the client so putting in a picture of the pet here is just going to change how it shows on the client information screen. So if I jump back off of here and go to the client information screen you'll see that uh, it's got all these different pictures that are associated with all of my pets. Awesome. So let's say that I uh, went ahead and looked at the client profile and I'm done looking at the client's profile so I'll close this tab here and here I am on the appointment and I'm just going to go ahead and hit save here and let's pretend like this person actually showed up. So they showed up and we're going to hit check in to check in the appointment. That's going to change the color. Uh, it's also going to put a little symbol on here to indicate that it was checked in and then I could go into the appointment details. I could look at recent visits, notes, pet information depending on what I wanted. I could also add in here additional services uh, depending on what the person might need to add on. Right. So then I just hit save to save that addition to the appointment. So there it is. And then, you know, really once the services have been rendered, you would hit this little button right here, ready for pickup. And if you have the texting service enabled, it would send a text message to the customer to let them know that their pet was ready. Uh, so you'd hit that little button. I'm going to hit that. And I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead and send that. Okay. That's going to change the color again to indicate that the appointment has uh, been marked ready for pickup. Uh, and then what would happen, a little time would go by, and then the client would show up, and they want to check out. So if I'm going to check this appointment out, let's run through what that looks like. I click on it once. I go to this little checkout button down here. And it runs me into the checkout flow where it wants me to go ahead and add on more products and services, right? So I can sell more. Upselling is always a big thing. Uh, I could also change and add discounts. I could still change prices on this screen, uh, indicating, you know, everything that I needed to to make sure that the record was as accurate as possible. And then if I hit this proceed to payments, and it's going to take me to the payment screen, right? So uh, you just indicate the method of payment that the client was using. Uh, let's go ahead and say that it was a cash payment. And we'll just go ahead and say that it was the full, a uh, little bit more than the total due. I will hit that add payment. And then it's going to say that there's change that's due back, $1.60. Uh, let's go ahead and say that the person left it as a tip. So we'll hit this add tip. And then we'll put in here $1.60 as a tip. And we'll hit add. And then it's going to say that there's no amount due back and we can go ahead and close out this ticket and finish out this process. So I'll hit close ticket. It's going to ask me if I want to print or email the receipt. Uh, I'll hit skip receipt for our example. And then it's going to ask me if I want to rebook the appointment. Let's go ahead and hit that and I'll run you through what the rebook screen looks like. So it pulls up this little appointment card. This should look kind of familiar with my uh, client, my services on here. I would jump out to a certain day in the future, let's say it's six weeks away. I could change the time, I can change the person it's with or the date, but let's say that this was good, the client liked this. I just hit schedule and then it's going to go ahead and duplicate that appointment uh, onto the appointment book six weeks out of the future. Awesome. And then to jump back to today, I'm just going to hit the today button right here in the upper left and there is my closed out transaction. Uh, to indicate that it's been closed out. It's just black in color. Cool. Well, that really brings us to the end of the Getting Started video. Like I said, uh, the video was not meant to touch on everything that the software can do, just kind of get you rolling with uh, some of the basics. I strongly encourage you to watch some of the other videos in this series or call us 
uh, to set up uh, additional help over the phone. Phone number is 1-800-604-2040. Once again, 1-800-604-2040. Talk to you again later. Bye now.